G'day everyone and welcome back to NS2HD. This is part three of three of the internal Unknown Worlds Entertainment playtest of Build 160 and as yet unreleased build, at least at the point of me uploading this video. Who knows, could be released tomorrow, the next day, don't know when it's going to be released. It will be relatively soon though. And this is the third and longest part of this three-part game commentary from the first-person perspective of both Alien and Marine Team. So if you haven't seen part one and two, have a look at those. I'll put the link. I'll put the links in the bottom of this video so you can get at them easily and have a watch of them. This part is by far the longest. I'm going to exploit the fact that YouTube has allowed me to upload videos longer than 15 minutes to get this game finished and out there for all of you because I figure if you've watched part one and two then you'll probably just want to watch part three in one big chunk and there's no point in breaking it up anymore. So here we go, just getting uh, killed there as I start to focus in on the actual game itself and back out again and I've got 48 plasma so I've got my pick of weapons and I've picked a trusty shotgun. I think I was using a grenade launcher before, I'm not sure. It's amazing how when you're not commentating what's actually going on you can lose it. <laughs> yes, um, someone called me a uh, an escaped prisoner because I'm Australian and I said, well actually, usually the term used for Australians is convict, so there you go, just a little bit of a UK Australia humour there. Seeing as Australians were originally convicts, well, I mean, colonised Australia was colonised yeah, with convicts. So there you go, I'm a convict and that's that joke. Now, I've got an armoury here in uh, West Wing and this game is, I'm just healing up against this armoury, this game really happened between West Wing and Alien Start. It is really, really concentrated in this corridor right here. So much combat happened here. I think because there were only about eight of us in the game, we got the blinkers on and we just failed to recognize the weakness of the alien team from other approaches. So basically the game happened here. Ooh, got a bit of an odd skulk run there, but doesn't matter because managed to take out Breadman. Probably a little bit of weird lag there causing that to happen for him. But it looked like a cool kill for me, so I'm okay with that. I love this. I love when you start fighting a fade, you will be you start to get the instinct for when you see him blink, look behind you. Oh, managed to get a lucky kill down on him as well. So one dead fade. He's probably got the plasma to go straight back to fade though. Putting that sentry gun up because we are trying to push yet again in this corridor towards Alien Start. So hopefully this time we can be a little more lucky and we can actually push in there and end this game. But as you can see by the length of this video, it's probably not going to happen anytime soon. Here trying to get some plasma by killing an egg. Now I've had been killed doing that before, just earlier, just before in uh, part two of this game, but I didn't get killed then. There is a whip up there that we can't seem to kill. We tried to kill it with a Mac, but because it's up on the piping, our bullets can't seem to get to it. So, Flare is going to come in later and try to kill it with a flamethrower, I think. For now, it's just going to sit there killing our armory, and I can't seem to get any damage in with the pistol either. It is quite well covered up there, and it's a mature whip too, so it does have a lot of help. Health, mature whips and mature crags and mature everything else have more health than their standard uh, brethren whips and crags. Here comes Flare with the flamethrower, and he's just going to say over the mic, I think at this point, something like, burn it. Call me. No, nothing. Anyway, <laughs> not there. I must have missed. Got there. Anyway, so we're going to switch up now. Now, the idea behind this tactic is we wanted to have the sentry guns here to cover us while we got grenades and just lob them into the hive to slowly kill it. Unfortunately, Lurks had a good idea about what to do. Just stay out of range of the sentry guns at the bottom of the ramp by gassing us from over here at the other end of Alien Start. So I'm pushing forward to try to take that Lurk out. Unfortunately, DJ Splendid comes in as a skulk and takes me down, reduces me to a spectator. The combat was so intense in this little part of the map that basically for the next uh, 14 minutes of this game, what you're going to see is intense combat over that part of the map. Luckily, I do have a lot of plasma because I spent so long fighting in there, so I had about 120 plasma, so I could take my my pick of weapons, and I have picked a grenade launcher to attach to my rifle, and then proceed back there. Because we have an infantry portal in both West Wing and Marine Start, we will sometimes spawn in Marine Start and sometimes in West Wing, and obviously when the combat is happening in uh, West Wing Alien Start, you want to spawn in West Wing, but it's not always possible, it's just luck of the draw. Dumping grenades down on those lurks at the end of the corridor. Unfortunately, I hit the Mac with that grenade, and I managed to grenade myself, taking half my health away. Luckily, with the armory here, it doesn't matter. I can heal up really quickly and get ammo and just continue to pound away with the grenades. Notice the lurk who is just hiding there against the wall. I'm not sure. Oh, it's Breadman, and he snipes me. 
and that's it for NS2 HD yet again I am taken down but it's okay we do have teammates I've got teammates I think Flayra and Sergeant Barlow up there fighting away so we're not gonna lose that position just because I died yet again now at this point I thought all oh, right bread man you're a pretty clever lurk I'm gonna be a pretty clever marine I finally decided to go the other way and run all the way around the other end of the map so I went through auxiliary node then central access found only one whip in here sorry one uh, Hydra in there so that was pretty safe ran up to behind where I knew the lurk was hiding so here I go with the shotgun Right up, there's a, there's a whip there, but I'm going to ignore it. I get up nice, close yeah. and personal, and there you go. Two quite inaccurate hits took down that lurk very quickly. So surprise, Breadman, if you're watching this. I was so proud of that kill because I finally outsmarted you because you've been killing me so much from that little spot. So here we go, pushing in. The whole Marine team is pushing into the alien side hive right here. I get up close and personal with that Hydra and take it down. And here is the lurk again. I think it might be Breadman again. I'm not sure. No, I think he just got flamed. So it's another player. I'm not sure who it is. And I'm reloading. It's Murphy reloading right behind him. He's got no idea I'm there. Unfortunately, I can't land enough hits to take him down. And that skulks flying around. There must be a little bit of lag happening right now. That's probably why we didn't get hit. Commander dropping health packs at me. Thank you very much, Commander. I think the Commander is... I'm not sure at the moment. I'm not sure of many things at the moment. All I know is this is a lot of fun and the aliens don't realize that I'm in the back of their hive taking down a Hydra there with the shotgun again. So effective against Hydras. Lots of eggs here, any one of which could be an alien. That's the really scary thing about being in a hive. Those aliens, I mean, the aliens could be inside those eggs and I wouldn't know. They could be looking at me right now and I would have no idea that they're staring at me. And there you go. An alien pops out, but I don't think he realized I was there. Again, Breadman sliding along the floor. Don't know what's happening with that lag. Sneaking up behind Murphy and taking him down yet. Uh, no, sorry, taking him down for the first time. So managing to get a kill there as well. So it was a shotgun kill on a surprise lurk. Then a pistol kill on someone killing the uh, sentry guns, and then finally another shotgun kill on that skulk who was also fighting amongst the sentry guns. So I got a, a bit of a run of luck there, and then finally taken down by DJ Splendid, who also took down Flayra, and then was finally taken down by the sentry gun. So we still maintain our position. Unfortunately, many of us are dead, so we may lose this position now. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to hold it, and I have to hurry back and get there. Switching to a grenade launcher again. It's so good having all this plasma because you can choose what, what, what weapon you want and unlike in NS1 you do not have to wait for the commander to drop weapons. There may be the possibility of that happening in later builds but buying your own weapons is here to stay so hopefully we'll have the best of both worlds there. And the ability to buy your own weapons is just awesome because it allows you just a little bit of freedom to have a bit of fun. I'm still obeying the commander's orders, I'm still going where he wants me, but I'm picking the weapon I want. And he's giving advice to us saying I think you should use grenade launchers and I'm following it. There we go, taking out Breadman with a combination of bullets and grenade launcher. Unfortunately, we've lost the armor here and I was taken out yet again by a lurk at the end of the corridor. So, deady bones for NS2HD again. Sentry gun's still there, but I don't think that'll last long because a, a skulk can just leap past it. I should not be dilly-dallying around at the armory. I should be straight back in there to try and save that sentry gun. So, I grabbed a flamethrower because I know it's a skulk there and flamethrowers are very effective against skulks. Getting the flames in, managing to take both of them down. Their health must have been weakened because flamethrowers do not kill that fast as they used to as fast as they used to in build 159 so they must have been weakened chasing the lurk down unable to kill the lurk with the flamethrower coming in the other side catching two skulks will i be able to kill them both getting a good flame down on one of them so killing Enceladus uh with the uh Flamethrower unable to kill the other Skulk, he was able to escape, getting whacked by the whip, down to 15, nice. sorry, 11 health, not good, reloading, running away, but taken down by the whip, I think that might have been a mistake, I think the engine, the game might have mistakenly ascribed that kill to the whip when it was in fact a Skulk that took me down, these sentry guns are not going to, oh my god, they did both go down, Flayra got one of them, and Juriki, the <laughs> commander play sentry gun, got another, so I do not, that was just amazing, I thought that sentry gun was going to go down for sure, switching up to a shotgun now, because it's a 5v, Four. We do have the numbers advantage on the marine the team, so we should be able to push in into the alien hive. We will see what happens, what I can make happen. Let's see if I can do something crazy and heroic like I managed to do when I came up behind those lurks. Just getting in time to find with a little bit of lag. Enceladus going to work on those sentry guns, so I managed to take him down. I think there's someone behind me, maybe not. 
Getting the pistol out, remember to switch to your pistol when you come to a medium range combat situation and you have your shotgun and also when you, you've got the rifle out, switch to the pistol when you encounter a long range combat situation because the pistol is a little sniper weapon. It is very powerful at long range. There we go, getting it out there at close range as well. So very powerful all round weapon. Don't look at the pistol as just a sidearm when you're playing NS2. It's really a... It's a weapon for different circumstances. It's not just a weapon to pull out when you run out of rounds in your primary magazines. It's a weapon to pull out for specific circumstances. And I think that's really cool, having a weapon that's a sidearm that's also for specific circumstances. It mixes the gameplay up and creates a little more skill and makes it more interesting. So taking down that... No, not able to take that lurk down and getting bitten down by Enkelatus again. So... And, avenged by the sentry gun. So thank you, sentry gun, for avenging me. That was very nice of you. Now, this game drew on for quite a while, and at this point, I think if you add up section, uh, parts 1, 2, and now 3, the game has been going for about 27 minutes. So a very long game, and the reason I think for that, I'm going to take a moment from commentating the first-person view to talk about this more generally. The reason that for that, I think, is that Rockdown is not a map designed for actual gameplay. It is a, It was originally designed for engine testing. It has been adapted for small, sp small scale gameplay. And therefore, the natural selection to game balance doesn't work quite as well. There you go, taking down that Lurk Murphy there. Finally getting a hit in on that Lurk at the end of the corridor. Uh, so that's why Rockdown games seem a little odd, because they're not being played on a map that's been made with NS2 gameplay in mind. They were made, it was made for engine testing, just like NS2 underscore Junction was made for NS2 testing. Tram is made for actual gameplay. Unfortunately, uh, NS2 gameplay is intended to have about 16 v 16 players, and at least maybe 8 v 8, 10 v 10. And small maps do not fill, sorry, big maps do not fill out with that many players. And so on a tram, uh, in a tram game, having only, say, eight players in the game means that the game will proceed incredibly slowly. And it's the same for a small map like Rockdown. You need more players to get the game to proceed quickly. And the commander was recognized. This commander is Flayer right now, and he decided, right, I am going to just build heaps of sentry guns. You guys just build them up, and I'll try to keep you alive with med packs. So there you go, game director of Unknown Worlds using sentry spam to win a game. So it's a legitimate tactic to use. And I think at this point of the game, it was definitely a legitimate tactic because we needed to make something happen. We needed to break the deadlock of this game. So we are going to use sentry guns to do that. So you can see that Flayera is just rotating these sentry guns to fight all coming threats. Very cool the way the sentry guns are moving left and right and engaging all threats to us as we try to keep them alive and they try to keep us alive. Taking down Breadman, Lurk escapes my fire. Need to get some ammo for my grenade launcher. There we go. Full grenade launcher ammo again. Need to put some down there to kill that lurk. Will I be able to? Not even firing. I did just skip forward there because I remember now we encountered a, a lag spike. It was about 15 seconds long, so I've just skipped forward. And now this lurk is firing in the grate. And I'm trying to lob grenades up there, but that's not going to work because it's just there's too much ceiling space up there. The grenade is getting lost between all the girders and I-beams and the Lurk is still alive and oh he's just gassing and spiking us and it's a perfect perfect position. It's really a great example of three-dimensional combat in Natural Selection 2. This battle is happening not just in two dimensions, not just in vents, it is happening above and below the ground. It's awesome because remember there's grates below the deck there as well. You can get below that deck and be a skulk and they could be watching me as I run in there. Not sure why I'm spending so much time at the armory there. I think I was trying to switch to flamethrower but encountering a little bit of an armory glitch. So wasn't able to switch it up. I'm going to maintain the grenade fire down on this hive. So there we go. Two of us firing down into... I think that's Max next to me firing into the hive. Uh, with grenades. Notice that Max was on the alien team before, but so was I. People were switching between teams the whole time, but the teams remained even the whole time. Me luckily getting an egg there as well, getting a little bit of lag there, but I've just decided I'm going to continue dumping grenades into the hive, trying to damage it, trying to bring this game to a close uh, at the 24-25 minute mark. But unfor No, the 34 minute mark, but not able to do so, not able to do enough damage. A hive has enough health to stand up to, say, four or five marines killing it. So when you think about a 16v16 game happening, say you had a squad that was moving out as a strike force, it's probably going to have seven or eight people in it, and a hive will drop very quickly if those eight people attack it without enough aliens to protect it. 
And so what you're seeing here is basically four or five people trying to do the job of a much larger marine team to kill this hive. So when natural selection 2 starts to become a lot bigger and we get more players in servers, uh, scenes like this won't happen. And this is really improvised gameplay. This is us, me trying to kill this lurk but unable to get enough get damage through the grate there. Bullets ricocheting off everywhere. This is really a, an understaffed marine team trying to grind down this hive. Killing eggs is a really good idea during scenes like this because if you kill the eggs, the aliens cannot spawn. And if aliens cannot spawn, they cannot defend the hive. And so it's a vicious cycle for them. And of course, you get plasma as well. And plasma is useful because it allows you to continue buying grenade launchers, flamethrowers, shotguns, all weapons that do significantly more damage to hives than the standard rifle, although the rifle's new bite is seriously intense. When you get it hands on build 160, really get in there, try with the rifle, try and kill some things. There you go, see, killing Max very quickly there. I don't think he'd been weakened too much either. Notice the jet flames out the back of the Max, giving them a lot more personality. Now, I landed a lot of hits on DJ Splendid, and I went for the kill, unfortunately taken down by his spikes before I could switch to pistol and get the final killing blow in. And also wounded by a skulk at my feet. You could see the sentry gun firing down on that hive. They're doing constant, constant damage to it. So the hive is going to start to die. Now, at this point, I'm all the way back at Marine Start, so I'm missing out on what could be the final combat. The hive is on fire, and it is going down, and I'm all the way back here. So I'm not sure if I'm going to see what happens. Checking for skulks up here, I was scared that a skulk might jump out and get me. Running back into the hive here. Will it already be dead? I'm not sure. Past the armory. And why am I stopping to get a weapon? I need to get in there and fight. Here we go. Jumping straight into fight. Firing on the lurk, but getting taken down straight away by Max, who has switched back to the alien team. Now I have cut forward here because what happened was I died, the hive was killed and immediately I just started the long run back. So I've run, I've skipped forward straight away to let you see the dead hive in here. We have finally killed the alien team. They didn't have the ability to spawn at their other hives. And we've won. So thanks a lot for watching this incredibly long game, guys. I'm sure many of you didn't make it through the whole thing, but if you did, congratulations. I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to leave commentary pointers and requests and everything down in the comments below. I'm sure I missed some things and said some things wrong, but hey, that comes with the territory when you're commentating a game this big. And there we go, back into the ready room. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget oh, to subscribe yeah. for future videos, and I'm sure look out for Build 160 in your uh, Steam Wait, download okay, very soon well because I don't think it'll be very long before it hits the Steam servers. That was a, kind of a ridiculous game, but.